I was asked to come and talk about inclusion from uh, the perspective of being the chair of the National Fire Chiefs Council. Um, so I started um, actually with some reflections from when I was the Chief Fire Officer of Suffolk Fire and Rescue Service for eight years before I came into this role. Uh, and the, the importance of this fire service, both internally and externally, being an inclusive organisation about the fact that the quality of the decisions we make um, is reflective of the collective intelligence that goes into how we make those decisions. And what I mean by that is the different perspectives that people bring from right across the organisation, including at the most senior level, where you bring perspectives of different backgrounds, different work experiences, different life experiences, uh, and all the perspectives that come with different protected characteristics as well. Um, and if you get that right, and we haven't as a fire and rescue service yet got that right, um, then diversity really is the secret to the success of a good fire and rescue service. Because I think often in the fire and rescue service, uh, we, we're always looking for the next challenge, we're always looking for the next thing to do. And sometimes it's right that we, we pause, we look over our shoulder and look at the progress that has been made. And I think progress has been made, but I don't want to get too excited about it um, because there is still a long way for us to go. Um, but there is some success that we can build on. Um, in terms of the progress that's being made, then I think individually fire and rescue services, to a greater or lesser extent, because not everybody's in the same place, are doing some fantastic things um, to create a much more inclusive organisation, to try and get a much more diverse workforce and try and get more diversity in roles throughout the workforce. And the National Fire Chiefs Council has a role to play in that as well, both in terms of a very visible leadership role from me and some of my senior colleagues who work in these areas, uh, but equally some of the products and the guidance that we provide services uh, that enables them to take those and then use and apply those in their own organisation to, to improve the inclusive nature of the service. But I would sort of conclude on that one by saying there is still more for us to do. Uh, we do still need to better reflect the communities in which uh, we operate uh, and we do need to have um, more creativity and diversity within the organisation in terms of the people within it and how we make decisions within it as well. AFSA plays a really important role as do other similar organisations, um, Women in the Fire Service being another obvious example. Um, you're often the, the catalyst and the voice for some of these discussions. I've come to the conference today and there is a fantastic atmosphere, a fantastic buzz in the room. There are 250 people, something like that here, um, and you're hearing and we are hearing from a broad range of speakers. Um, so as a really important role to play. I think the challenge for the Fire and Rescue Service, and AFSA again has a role to play in that, is how do we break out of those that regularly come to these conferences and into those who don't? regularly come into these conferences to encourage them to come and use it as a catalyst within their own organisations as well.